so it seems like it's working so let's start by the big steps so here is basically all the steps that you need when you want to start closing deals so your first step is to set up your company that's maybe a bad uh this is a bit too obvious for some of you but i can tell you it's not the question with a company setup is always the same do i need a local company in my local country or do i need an offshore company in dubai in singapore in hong kong or wherever so this is quite it's always the first question to someone who is like, should I do or should I open a local company? Should I open an offshore company? The problem is that there is no, no one size fit all answer for this. Uh, this is why we, uh, I mean, I go about it in the merchant bootcamp. Uh, what is the best, uh, what is the best solution depending where you are in state? But I would say most of the time, the local company uh, is going to be the one that you prefer to open first. Uh, especially if your counterparties are from your country. But then again, it's really case by case. Then partnerships. So this is where I, I basically uh, encourage everyone to start when they have nothing, is to start with a partnership. Find another company, another trading company, and basically add them if they can carry your trade. So uh, they are going to be the counterparty in your trade and ask them to carry the trade uh, just to make sure that you can... Uh, <laughs> this is a very good way to... Um, uh, cap your downside so if you don't make any money or if you do something stupid uh, basically you have no downside so first step is company uh, set up a company then once you open a company account you need to open a bank account so basically a bank account you need to open to have all the due diligence document prepared and to also you need to have a business plan most of bank now they ask for being business plan i know it's completely stupid but this is what they do so be ready with your business plan. Then we are going to arrive in the first deals. So here is your first deal. All the steps. So the first thing um, I always encourage everyone to start with a buyer. Find a buyer, ask him, ask him or her what they want, what they use and then try to find them. Basically, the best way is always like this. When you start is you find someone, I don't know, that do packaging or that do whatever. And they say, oh, I need I need recycled plastic for my machine or I need, uh, I don't know, like oil for my motor. So I need whatever. Find someone that need some type of material, raw materials, commodity, ingredient, and then try to source what they need. It's the best way to start. But I've noticed that even though I said to everyone that you do should like, like you should start like this, it's more difficult to uh, to find a buyer than a supplier for sure. So let's say that you start with a supplier, and then because this is what the, most of you guys are in, um, in in the stage, you have a supplier but you have no buyer. So let's see how to find a buyer. So the first thing that you need to ask from your supplier is basically those information. I speak, I've spoken with people that haven't got those information from the buyer, so some from the supplier. So it's you need a picture of the bags or a picture of the containers. If it's um, or the pictures of the uh, if they don't have bags or big bags or whatever, you need at least a picture of the product. Then you need a, a certificate of analysis of the product. You need to know the HS code of the product. The HS code is the Amanda Aponize system code. Uh, you can check on YouTube. I have a, a video about that. And you need to ask a doc list of a former um, shipment. Basically, you are going to say, look, um, you've done other shipment. You've done past shipment in the past. Can you please give me the list of documents that you give to your buyers to make sure that they can import it uh, in their country? Of course, add them to remove the name of their buyers. You don't want to see it, but you want to have at least a doc list. And uh, you, so then you can also uh, see what's up and what your uh, buyer, uh, what, what is required to import in the country. So this is the more, I mean, the minimum information that you need to have from your supplier. And the best is to have like a really uh, helpful supplier. So if you start with a supplier that you, you kind of know him, it doesn't really answer to you, he didn't even give you all those documents, just find another, find another, I mean, find another supplier because this guy is not going to, uh, I mean, it's going to be very difficult to do something with him. So find a supplier, basically go, to, go with him. You know, if you're new, just say the truth. I used to do this type of drum. Now I'm, I'm jumping into community. Um, uh, would it be okay if I bring you some more clients? Of course, they're going to say yes. Uh, but then they need to be also at full down the line. So uh, that's... Um, <clears throat> 
that's uh that's the one that, uh, hold on a second I, let me see if there's question so what do community are looking for do they only have your account for that good account? okay so this is completely uh not i will answer this question later and all the rest okay no problem so once you have your supplier then you need a lead database so a database full of leads leads are potential buyers so how do you get this database so basically let's see here you need to start by lead scrapping so you need to scrap the web i mean this is how i do it so and all my companies the problem is never the buyers the problem is the lack of uh <laughs> of financing always because we can't find enough buyer like i mean I, i've never really had a yeah the problem the problem is not the buyers <laughs> the problem was always that we don't have any, enough uh, finance to to make all the trade so um what I'm, I'm 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 showing you right now guys is i don't know why people are not doing it because i'm doing it and we always have more buyers than than uh, money to, to find other deals so anyway uh so you start with lead scrapping so basically you are going to go to all the conferences um and event website you are going to see all the companies that are there you are going to use data aggregators so this is a sheet that i don't have uh i didn't have in the past in the past when i started now um, you need to use a data aggregator it costs money for sure but then the data aggregator is going to get all the bl information from your country from uh, the uh, your, your shipment or the thing that you are going to uh, to trade so you need some type of data aggregator because you can get uh, the name of the importer and exporter on this uh, uh with those bl information so it uh, will save you a lot of money then of course you can use linkedin to scrap the information and also all the website about trade association so if there is like an association of grain of i don't know users in poland or wheat users or cooking oil users, or whatever there is now a trade association for basically all the commodities so uh you can scrap the information also on those websites there is something that uh um uh i don't know if i should add it or not but maybe not but it's also how high let's say uh, let's put it in red so you shouldn't do it but you can buy list so you can buy a list from of uh buyers uh, uh directly from the custom actually it's completely illegal but um in a lot of countries what you can do is you can say look this is the hs code that i have uh can you tell me all the people that export this product or all the people that import this product in the country and uh yeah like i mean yeah a, a, a lot of custom agents i mean th there's a lot of way to get those lists um and i know that some people do that then you have all your lead so one other thing that you need to know is to need to uh, know if um, you can ship whatever the product from your supplier to this country so you need to do a regulation check uh the best way to do it is like you ask your supplier you should know um you need to ask custom brokers at destin at destination okay uh what should i need to okay what do i need to do to uh, import that product in your country and also there is like few uh, agency that also help you with the regulation but i don't really use an agency what i do is like i'm just checking with the custom brokers and the suppliers and then you need to clean your lead uh depending on the regulation and also you need to clean your lead with um there's a bunch of software that are contact finders uh basically you just put the email or the number of the company and it will give you uh, all the email of that company so then once you have your lead clean you have the, your lead database uh, and then before the reach out there's something that uh, seriously I don't understand you need to have some online uh, presence so the bare minimum is a website I mean if you don't have a website even like a, a bullshit website with your, your face I mean you should have your face on your website if you don't have your face on your website I mean don't, don't just don't do it because uh, the idea is to build trust because if when you are going to reach out to people if they don't know you they are going to check you online they are going to uh and if you don't have a website it's bad uh email uh, email emails email plus uh, this one is email plus oh, I don't know. anyway so you need to have like a, a professional email email signature okay and also you need to have an email from your company website so i don't if you do gmail at gmail at uh, hotmail .da, come on dude you, you really think that you are going to ship uh, for 200k of value or half a million of value or two million of value 
with someone with a, a Gmail account. It, it, I mean, you can do that if you are uh, extremely well known in your uh, in your industry. Uh, then yeah, of course, deal with your Gmail account. But come on, you need to have a company um, email. Uh, then um, you need to have also a LinkedIn. Now a lot of people are checking in LinkedIn, so you need to create a proper LinkedIn profile profile for yourself and for your company. And you need to post at least three times a week under your your profile is better, but your company profile could also do it. And if you have no idea about what to post, it's fucking easy now with uh, ChatGPT. Let's say that you want to deal copper, you can ask ChatGPT to give you 10 facts about copper, then you just copy paste and post, post uh, those information. You just check that this is correct, but man, let's uh, do it. Uh, now uh, I spoke about how to find uh, a data, how to build a lead database. Now you need to have the minimum online online presence and now reach out. So let me see if there is other other, other question. Um, okay. Hello, hello. How are you guys? So I took your question because usually they are not stupid. Okay, uh, back to the supplies around you. Uh, and there some situation where you need an external party to test the good and provide server, who is always provided by the supplier. This is a very good question. So basically what he's saying is like, look, if you have a supplier, maybe you don't know the supplier very well and the supplier is going to give you a certificate of analysis, uh, see why it's certificate of analysis with the specification of the good. The question, do you trust this certificate? Because the guy could say like, look, when, uh, uh, and those, uh, this guy, like, he doesn't know shit. So uh, let's send a, a certificate of analysis. That could be wrong. So the question is, um, do you need a third party, like an inspection company such as SGS, Cotecnas, I don't know, Bureau Veritas, BG. I mean, there is a lot of them that can do that uh, to uh, test. So um, my answer to that is, it depends. <laughs> so, um, if you um, uh, you should know quite well your uh, supplier, you, you should uh, I mean you shouldn't use uh, a very unknown supplier or un uh, trusted supplier. You should always always use them use a good trusted supplier. But if the case that this is not, I will always test the product that um, you are going to buy. And usually you will see a little bit down the line, uh, you are going to ask for a sample and so on. So it doesn't really make sense to test yourself at that level, at the, at the, very, at the very beginning, uh, the, the, the product, but you will down the line test their product for sure of, with your own lab. Do we have to post on LinkedIn or can we post on a website? You can post on the same on LinkedIn in your, in your website. Okay. Bim. Let's carry on. So, set up a video call. So, this is, um, oh no, come on, I'm sorry, reach out. So, let's see the reach out process. Bam. Okay. So, first things that uh, I, I do and all my employees do is you try to connect to the people that you want to reach out before sending an email to on LinkedIn. Then there is uh, usually two or three mail that I send. Then, uh, yeah, it's, a, a four, it's for the sequence. It's a four-step sequence, but you can change it. But I usually I try to uh, do it in four. So first email, second email, then uh, on, uh, try to connect on LinkedIn. Of LinkedIn, if of course the guy is on LinkedIn, then one to two message on LinkedIn, and then if nothing is working, then you call. What I've noticed is that people are extremely bad at uh, writing uh, introduction email. So here is something that uh, I would, but it's just like, of course, just uh, an example. But what you need to do when you send an email is first, the subject must be or should be quick question because people are like, oh, quick, uh, this is cool. And don't uh, don't send a subject with like, oh, new opportunities or new. I mean, they receive shit like this uh, every every day. So uh, try to have a close, uh, a very short subject. Then try to have one personalized line. So try to look a little bit uh, about the person if you can. Try to look a little bit about the company. Uh, is there some news or whatever about the company? And try to have one personalized line. The most important, why do you need to have a personal line, line uh, here? Is that when you open your Gmail account, your Microsoft account, and so on, when you look at uh, an email, you have the name of the sender, 
the uh, subject and the first line. So this is the treating that you uh, can see. So uh, this is why you need to have a, a short subject and what you need a personalized line because if you the guy read the, the first line, he's like, ah, okay, he's speaking to me. He has more chance to open your email. Then, uh, so first, yeah, um, good subjects, then uh, personal personalized first line, then I work for a company XYZ. We've been doing business for three, three years, focused on supplying West African countries with Veg Oil. We did that, that, that last year. So with the with the second line, what you're going to do is you're going to bring context, but it must be also extremely short again. You bring context, you've been in business for three years, so you guys are like, okay, they are not new. And we did 50,000 metric uh, turn last year. So at least, you know, it gives them uh, a bit more um, authority and uh, a bit more context about what, uh, who you are. Then I'm looking for Palmer for Senegal, what you need. And then a CTA, call to action. So uh, I don't want before speaking about prices or whatever. Let's have a quick chat to see if uh, it makes sense to work together. And then you have a bunch of uh, uh, opened, a bunch of uh, start for the call. That's what would, a good image would look like. Um, uh, then if none of that work, then people call until someone pick up. Uh, I started by only calling, uh, and it works, but it takes a lot of time. It's a bit tiring. So just uh, email plus LinkedIn works usually quite well. So once you reach out, then what you want to do is to have a video call. Now it's also quite new. Uh, it used to be the case that video call were not uh, <laughs> that common, but now we always try for a video call. And basically uh, now we I use a calendar to get uh, my team to book a meeting for me. Uh, and basically once you also get the, uh, someone to reply, you should get their WhatsApp uh, messenger and then email just to make sure that people click on the link or give when they want or let my team know when they want to have this call. Then they set up the video call. One thing that we do again is before the call, which is here, it's a qualification call. I will explain. We try to send a, a education second. So education seconds is something that uh, um, I do it. It works well. It's basically uh, we send them a bunch of emails, or now it's a, like a video that explain a little bit more about who we are, who we are, our company, and so on. And this is quite important because then when the guy arrive at the call, he has more information. And this is a it, it's a game changer, you know, for the call to go quite quicker and also to to build the trust. So uh, we are doing that, and it works very very well. So. Then qualification call. So this is the part that a lot of people completely fucked up. So the 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 the, the idea behind this call is to um, understand two things. The first one is, is it a good fit for you? So is it a company that where you can sell to them? You know, is it a good buyer for you? So what you are going to ask is about the product specification. What do they need? What do they use? Financial requirement. Uh, this is maybe a um, financial requirement would be like a uh, do they pay with a LC? Do they ask for a credit? What, 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 what usually, how do you, how usually they work? The price sensitivity. So, um, this is something that you can, uh, see. Uh, not all the buyers are that price sensitive. Some buyers, um, will put more emphasis on, the, I don't know, the quality, the fact that you are not late and so on. So this, um, you need to, it's going to be tough to find it on a, on a first, on a first call, but usually at this time you'll see, you can get uh, pretty quickly a good sense of what type of buyer they are. Of course, then you need to ask all the questions if you haven't found it on the web or, or something like this, company size, uh, purchasing pattern. Okay, do they buy um, opportunistically or is it planned? Uh, and then also their business model, what do they do with the product and so on? What are the margin? Sometimes the people don't know, but it's quite important to know, to know the business model. So then you can have an idea of the margin. So then you can have an idea of their price sensitivity. So if someone buys something dirt cheap, then you know they are going to be, uh, if someone sells something dirt cheap, like, uh, you know, they are going to be extremely price sensible. Uh, if they say something with a lot of value added and big margin, they are going to be less price sensitive. So the question for the qualification would be like uh, asking about uh, the planning. Uh, okay, how do they buy? When do they buy? The size of the shipment? Where do you do? Well, what uh, do they buy? Um, where do they buy from? Uh, what quality? What specification? And so on. Who and who, uh, who they see to buy? How they decide to buy? And so on. Because you need to to speak with the person that will 
uh, pull the trigger on the purchase and not like a, an assistant of an assistant of an assistant. That's for the qualification. Then if the guy is not qualified, we'll put them into a notoring sequences. It's basically a bunch of email that you will receive for like a year, something like this, just for the guy maybe if he's not qualified, but for whatever reason, there could be like thousands of reasons why the guy is not qualified, but you maybe down the line, you are going to change your product, you are going to change something and you want him to yeah, just to think about you. So you'll put it to a notoring sequences. So uh, then usually if it works, it's going to, uh, you're going to send a sample. That's mostly, that's how most of the, yeah, that's how. Maybe there's some community that don't require a sample, but uh, I'm not sure. So uh, you send a sample, then you need to follow up to get the result. This is very important. Um, uh, sometimes, you know, it's a pain in the ass to, to get someone to uh, answer, uh, yeah, just to do the analysis on the sample. And uh, after that, or at the same time, you need to do some type of vetting on the company. So when you know that uh, the sample is validated and there is a chance to do a deal, then you can start the, vet the vetting of the, the process of the vetting. Usually you should do that after the qualification call, but sometimes it's tough, you know, if you ask uh, all the questions about, oh, give me the paper of incorporation of the company, who is the owner of the company, who has a signature on the contract, blah, blah, blah. All those vetting questions, uh, I know that a lot of people don't do it and this is how they get fucked. So do it. But maybe it's better to do it once a sample is approved or once you have like a good relationship with them and you can ask a bunch of uh, nasty questions. Uh, and then after that, uh, there's often a trial shipment and you are going to visit the buyer on his site, on his factory, whatever. Um, usually this is how it works. Uh, trial shipment, most of the time there is like a small shipment of whatever commodity before going to a long-term contract or whatever so this is usually how it works of course when you have all those qualification qualification calls then if you see that someone is wrong or the when you send the sample you see that someone is wrong with the product with the quality and so on of course you need to give that to your supplier you need to explain to them what's up uh, and if it doesn't work with that supplier you need to change so any question bim okay Uh, Alexandre, uh, I guess the people will come later, but I would like to know who should prepare and I don't even know what is an, um, ah, and how the commission fees are regulated. So you are broke your man. I can't help you. Man. This is, uh, I want to uh, eradicate all the broker in this world and I want to move them to traders. So, um, sorry, man, I don't do commission. Do you always audit the supplier in person? Do you uh, sometimes close deal without having, oh, um, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, no, I don't always uh, audit supplier. Okay, let me. Uh, bim. Uh, no, no, I don't always audit the supplier in person. Um, but I would say eighty percent of the time I would. It really depends. But this went to see supply supplier. No, but I think even like no, it's not wrong. Like ninety nine percent of the time, we always. Uh, go uh, meet the supplier. Maybe not on the first uh, trial. Like if we do like a, usually what we do is like a small shipment, but it depends again the, the commodity. But if it's a low value commodity, like we can put like 5K, 10K uh, in one shipment, uh, then we can try. But no, 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 we always uh, audit the supplier for sure. Do you sometimes close deal without having a buyer in person? No. No, maybe, maybe, um, maybe for the deals of small value, maybe we haven't made the guy, maybe, maybe actually, but uh, if you do like something um, that has high value, of course, everyone I've seen each other face-to-face uh, -face multiple times. I don't believe you do million dollar bill deals with people that you haven't met. Or maybe you haven't met the, the owner of the CEO, but at least you have met the, the company. How do you create yourself authority when you're just starting? Uh, in what way? Uh, in the email, when you send a cold email and you, you have just started, what I would do is like uh, in the email is I like, oh, I used to work for this, this and that, or I used to, you try to, um, to use uh, someone else's authority. 
É uma descapital, iniciar capitais ao coelho. Tudo o Atman. Tudo o Atman. Trading firm, man. I think uh, in Hong Kong you can incorporate for 100, 100 bucks. Hey, Gary. Yeah, yeah man. Uh, long time no see, man. I've seen uh, you had like pretty good result at Glencore. So props to you and the team. Hope you you got a, a lot of money, man. Props to you. And I've seen Gary that uh, your competitor is now buying much and more, much more in uh, Russia, you know. And you are not. Um, should we always be visiting somebody in another country? I can't. Yeah. Yeah, man, I mean, you should, you should. I mean, th this is one thing that like, people don't really get is like, yes, you need to meet people face to face. Otherwise you are going to get scammed. And also, even if the guy is a, is a proper, if you work with a really huge company, like a Fortune 500, you don't really need to meet them. Like if they are your supplier, you expect that they are <laughs> going to, <laughs> to provide the product um, on specification. But if you work with someone like, a small company, a local company, then yeah, of course you need to meet them. Because there is also a problem. Let's say that they supply something shit. I mean, they okay, there is an issue with the specification. When they produce their thing, they, they fucked up. It happens, you know. Your client receives it, they say, well, blah, 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 what is this shit? And you're like, oh shit, uh, now I need to solve that. Uh, if you don't know your supplier, your supplier could be like, uh, man, I don't need, I, I, I don't know you. You said that my product is not good. Everyone said that my product is good. So what's up? And the guy is going to say like, yeah, go, uh, go fuck, go fuck yourself. And if you, before that, build a relationship with a supplier, and they could see that you are not like a joker, bro broker, like uh, the <laughs> like a broker, um, <laughs> then man is maybe is going to say, okay, look, maybe send me samples. We're going to analyze it. We're going to see what is going on. Maybe this batch is bad, whatever, because. Sometimes the people at the production line, you know, they do mistake or for whatever reason, and they don't say to the to, to the office. So everything could happen. But if you have like no trust, no report built with uh, your supplier, then it's not going to trust you, or it doesn't even want to spend the time uh, um, uh, selling your issue. What would we be? I don't know if I can make a PDF out of it. Maybe. Man, if you are not um, uh, subscribed, uh, go to the Shipping Community Academy, download the brochure, and then you will get our email. And I will see if I can get um, if I can do a PDF of it. And if that is the case, I will send an email to the list. How do you navigate the registry? No, uh, it's not. It's useless to have an in-house lawyer. I mean, depends the size. Man. If you have if you have 50, 60, 70 person, yet yeah, must be uh, this is maybe a good idea. But uh, before that, not really. Um, uh, uh, yeah. Usually, what you do is like you uh, ask um, uh, custom brokers uh, what is required or where I can see the regulation for that product. And usually, the custom brokers or the threat for others, depending, they can say, okay, so in that country, you should look uh, here. This is where you are going to find the law. And then you use uh, Google Translate. Could you please create a platform where you uh, follower can interact? I have YouTube, man. <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. So the thing is, uh, okay, so, uh, about that, Ibrahim. Um, I'm not going to do anything platform where everyone can set up, uh, can come. Otherwise, it's going to be a shit show. You know, there's going to be only um, dreamers and uh, broke brokers and no, nobody like serious would use this uh, this platform. This is why we, we can do that, and this is why all those platforms online that you can register and try to sell or buy stuff, it, all of them are full with the scammers uh, for one good reason. I'm about to get the course. Is a cotton? I mean, is it is it a real question here? <laughs> no. If you pay for the course, the the content is not online. Uh, hey, what's uh, your strongest argument for a client to buy from you when you are just starting off? Is it a matter of personal reason? Is it a matter of proposal? Um, yeah, so this is a very good question, Cotin de Chef. So, so there is not one strongest argument. So what usually happens is that um, you need to arrive at... Um, I have a small um, framework about that, which is called TLT, Trust, Likeability, and Timing. 
So that means that uh, they need, need to trust you first. If they don't trust you, I mean, they will not uh, do business with you. Likeability, they need to like you somehow, somewhat. And then there's I mean, a timing involved. And um, usually this timing is one of the most important. You need to have the two first, and then you need to have the right timing. So um, maybe, you know, relationship, the, the business relationship, they are not, not always going to expose you. Sometimes there's an issue with the supplier. The supplier is uh, is late, the shipment, the, the buyers is uh, frustrated, and then you are there like, look, okay, let's try with you. You know, this is something like this. So this is why you always need to be there. So then when there is like the good timing is there, then they, they will buy from you. And of course, if you can propose a better payment term, it's better. But if the other suppliers doesn't give them those payment term, that means that, <laughs> I mean, that, that means something, no? Hey, Damien, to answer the other dude. Yes, this is a country. How do you guess, uh, expect a strangers to deal with someone that they don't know? Yes. A funny question. Is it wrong to drive to a supplier client with a low-cost car? No, man. I don't know, man. I have a... I take a taxis. But no, I don't think it, uh, you lose credibility, actually. Uh, do you think uh, extension to uh, signals are important, like the way you dress, the car, and so on? No, I don't think a uh, car is important, but I think the way you dress is important. Uh, if you have arrived like a bump, like a bump, um, yeah, it's not going to, to make it. Um, but uh, but uh, yeah, the car, I would say that even the car could work the other way around, actually. Like if you have a, a really nice car, you're like, fuck, man, this guy is way too expensive. Uh, what will what we will be to see what the course look like inside, and also there are places where people can speak to each other within the course. Um, no, you can't see what the course is inside. What you can do is like you can um, uh, if you click, you go to the Shipping and Commodity Academy uh, website, then you click on the, the operation course, then enroll. There is a video where I see how it is inside. In this video, you can see. And then uh, if you uh, register for the course, then you will have access to the alumni uh, uh, the alumni um, network. And uh, this is all uh, the people on LinkedIn that want to be in the alumni network that have done the course. And then I know that a lot of people are uh, speaking to each other uh, and they find themselves on the alumni list. It's also better to go into a market when the market is dead as a producer and willing and to talk. Yeah, yeah, it's better. But I mean, the pro the problem is this: is like um, there is no like right time because if you go uh, if you go inside a, a market which is dead, then of course the producer will speak with you. But are you going to have like a buyers if no one wants to buy? Then on the other side, <laughs> if a market is extremely hot, you will probably find the buyers. Uh, but then are you going to find a proper supply? It. it as a trader, you are always playing on both sides. It's uh, it's quite difficult. I mean, this is what it makes uh, the job thrilling, but this is all what also make it uh, quite difficult. That video about that one one trading company, you mentioned that the person will recommend that for small traders and be trader, but their secrets to execute such complex deal. Man, uh, I don't think they. Uh, what what do you think is a secret then? Munya, I think you have like a, an African name. So what do you think is the secret? I don't know. And guys, what do you think is the secret? There is no secret. Man. The guy has been doing it for like uh, the whole, his, his whole life. I mean, he knows, I think it was copper, better than anyone. So uh, can go there to look at the... Uh, at, at, Traditional line and say, okay, this this don't work. Um, the guy has been doing like for, uh, and actually in that case, uh, it's a she. She's been doing that for like 20, 30 years. I mean, she worked for the biggest guy. She, she knows everyone. So this is how she's able to to do that. Uh, but a lot, a lot of uh, traders, most of the metal traders that I know, this is what they do in Africa. They uh, agglomerate a small, a lot from a smaller mine, and then ship uh, to China. So this is how you get um, better margin actually. It's very difficult to compete uh, on price. Uh, it's, I mean, it's very difficult to compete if you buy from one big mine that everyone knows and resell to uh, another guy. I mean, 
the mi the big mind that everyone trusts and every everyone buy from they are going to be extremely they are going to have extremely competitive price so you think aggregation is the best uh, sort of, yeah i think um, it's not like a question of what is um it, it's a question of what about um, um your your capital first uh, but yeah, aggregation and distribution are the best strategy for small players because it's it's a it's a headache. It's a it's very difficult to to pull off, uh, and uh, not really really difficult to pull off. But you need to have a good uh, logical logistic capabilities, and you need to work with shitty small uh, counterparties that uh, n nobody wants to work with. But if you can make it work, this is how you can unlock the most margin. Uh, and this is basically what I do with most of my business, but it's uh, it's tough, it's tough, and you need to be extremely careful because when you work with small, uh, the small uh, counterparties, they are the one that are most likely to to fuck you. So, uh, yeah, but this is I think this is the way that uh, you can uh, get super superior margin because if you go if you are a small a small player and you try to trade the tra same trade flow as the big players, you are just, I mean it won't work. I, uh, are you thinking to acquire another trading company like you did in Romania? I think it's quite interesting. Growth strategy is super bit for which and wish you would. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks a lot. Um, I mean, the one in Romania was a. Uh, I mean, that was. Uh, I think I'm, I'm, I don't think that I will do that <laughs> in the future. Um, uh, but um, what I'm, I'm working on and. I, um, is basically like maybe taking, taking like a supplier uh, and then uh, um, finding some type of GV with a supplier. So, and then we can have a, like create a trading arm. So then we already have the supply from his whatever activities. And then we put a trading arm on top of the supply. Uh, uh, and I think this is uh, easier things. Hey, the man is it? ah yes, it's going to be on on YouTube. And when are you on uh, when you are under capital to trade full containers load as a new one with no uh, industry rep? How one can raise to trade? Uh, yeah, man, no, I don't know, man, Baker. Just, it seems uh, very very difficult to do that. The thing is to raise trade finance. You need to have some type of um, um, track record. So you have at least three deals that uh, went well. <laughs> so you need to have some type of track record. So uh, if you are undercapitalized and you cannot do a full load, then you need to find uh, your, uh, your, uh, your your friends, your family, people that know you to, uh, to lend you money. When you start your own, is it more than focus? Or, uh, yeah, on one, one product, one product. Otherwise, I mean, yeah, you need to, to be focused. Otherwise, you, no chance you can do something. What, what did I do? What community do you think is the best to stop? I don't know, man. I think uh, the, this is, uh, again, it's, but this is the commodity that you have an edge. What, what is produced in your country? What is bought in your country? Um, stuff like, I think, and then this is how you are going to find something. Uh, there is like no one best commodity, but uh, okay, there is a lot of, I wouldn't, uh, I spoke on that in a few, com uh, uh, YouTube, uh, YouTube video, but, uh, I mean, if you have 50 million in the bank, yeah, do energy. Otherwise don't. About aggregation, you think it's a good idea for me to buy a truck and do it myself to cut on. No, no, don't, don't do, don't, don't buy a truck and don't, unless it makes really sense, but don't, uh, it's, I, uh, it's, yeah, don't, don't do it. <laughs> I mean, transport is uh, uh, is painful. So um, you you, I mean, you can buy ten trucks when you have the means to buy ten trucks, and then you have like a, enough. But only one. For, no, no, don't do it. Um, for instance, right now we are. It's it's only a project. I don't know if it's going to be done. But um, I'm not pretty sure it's going to be done. But I don't know on what form. But uh, in Romania, we want to have like a few uh, distribution uh, points with our own warehouse and uh, then we want to distribute b2c to consumer so there we are going to buy a bunch of uh, small trucks to do the distribution but it's because we want to to have a distribution channel uh, a b2c channel but otherwise don't buy it. 
dude, uh, I, I don't know. I've checked about this CPS fr CPF uh, French thing, but uh, no, we, we can't. I'm sorry. Uh, thinking about using Icarus model for one of the man Icarus model. What what is <laughs> what is that? <laughs> This is actually the, the nice the story about Icarus. So Icarus, for the people that don't know, this is a guy that um, his father was Dedalium, I guess, the guy that uh, built the labyrinth for the Minotaur. Uh, and then um, uh, the, the, the king just uh, put into the labyrinth Icar and Dedal. And they actually made, um, to escape from the labyrinth, they made like um, a fly, I don't know how you call it, a feather out of uh, wax and the thing is so the basically uh, Icarus was uh, was flying it was like oh this is so cool to fly and they were like going away from the labyrinth and basically as he flied too close to the sun uh, he, he died uh, the wax of the, of the feather just uh, melt and he died but there's one part of this story that it was never told it's like this uh, in if you read the, the first uh, time this story was written the, the father said two things to his son. Don't fly too close to the sun or you may die. And don't fly, don't fly too close to the ocean because a wave could uh, could hit you. And this is funny that, you know, no, but, uh, people only, or I don't know, people only remember the first part. Don't close too, don't, don't fly too close to the sun, you may burn. Because my, my theory is like, uh, this is why people, you know, they, they don't do shot, you know, they don't do stuff that they do, uh, they, uh, that they are so afraid to do stuff. Uh, they are too afraid to get drawn to the sun. But I'm telling you, it's a way more fun life to get burned by the sun than to be drawn in the ocean. Think about it. Um, you think it's smart to own a small house? Yeah, yeah, I think, uh, yeah. I mean, we are going to buy our own house to do our own distribution um because it makes sense for us but again you you need to check with the warehousing companies the transport company that you have in your region what is the prices and then if it makes sense to open competition no worries the amount of metals are almost out of business maybe you can buy <laughs> i don't know man i don't think so man i don't think so cpf yeah, this is a French thing, CPF. Basically, in France, they give you money to buy courses. But I, I need to uh, get my course registered to do that. And I checked, checked how, how to do it. But man, this is, yeah. <laughs> Seriously, of course, there's a lot of French people that ask me to, uh, if uh, my uh, academy is a CPF uh, certified. But man, the numbers of hoops, what you got to do to get to, to get this money, it, it's not for me. And then it's another thing with our state. I, I hate government soap. It's, just to, it's better to do it part time. But uh, yeah, of course. But I mean, I started my trading company on the side when I was a trader. <laughs> so, and I think most of the people in all of the course, they all have like a day job, most of them. And they have the and they have like this side of soul. Because at, honestly, man, it's going to take three years to have like a, to take a real salary, salary out of it. First year, you're going to do your uh, trial shipment and so on. Uh, second year, you're going to find a little bit of money left and right to do a little bit uh, bigger shipment. Third year, you start to understand what you are doing. You get credit from the bank and so on. And then you can get maybe enough volume to like have a real salary and live out of it. It takes time. But at the end of the day, it's a... Uh, um, it's better to to add yourself with a, with a, with a job. Yeah, no problem. Uh, what is Neo Finisha? So Neo Finisha, this is uh, the group that I've created. Uh, so basically, um, I run uh, another program called the Modern Merchant, and with this Modern Merchant, you get like one year free in uh, Neo Finisha. Right now, there is like I don't know, twenty people, something like this. And in Neo Finisha, there is the only way to get into Neo Finisha is like, and I invite you because I know you that you are, you are like, a, you are, you own a commodity trading firm or you are a commodity trader, uh, and then you can I guess, get access to it. Or you are from uh, the modern merchant bootcamp, um, and, uh, and yeah, so that's right. Right now, the two ways to get in the community because I don't want people, you know, with um, 
uh, you, yeah. if you want a community to work, it needs to be uh, a community with people that are uh, motivated. Uh, and you know, so this is my uh, way to make sure that there is like no bad people in this community. For bad people, it's just not bad people, but you know, unqualified people. I would say. Okay, guys, um, any other question? Let me know. Is there a real advantage if I source my product in a war zone or a difficult region? For the house? But I don't know, man. You need to, to run the numbers. We buy a lot from Ukraine, man. So, uh, uh, and I buy a lot from a lot of very difficult regions. And uh, we don't need a warehouse now uh, at Grumar Energy. But in my other company, Eco Metal Solution in DRC, we have a scrapyard. So we need our house to do that at uh, this uh, aggregation play. So it really depends, man. I, I don't know to say. I don't know what is the easiest uh, company to get a position in as a trader? But man, just the question is, uh, you, you won't make it, uh, Zakharov. I'm telling you. <laughs> what the what was my deal? <laughs> just like, you know, unsubscribe from my channel and do something else. Man. You won't make it. Just by the question. Man. Um, yeah, so for my day job, I suffered the but I should. Uh, what's that? Anything else to gain skills? No, but, but I, I don't know, man. I'm 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 not sure that you wish, uh you should do stuff, man. To learn, you should do <laughs> stuff, man. Try to do stuff, and then you will learn more than uh, going into another job. That's uh, that's yeah, that's what I would say. Did you miss uh, Switzerland? No, I don't miss Switzerland, um, but I miss it yet for my uh, family because you know I have. Uh, Few uh, small kids, and I have uh, my parents. Uh, I cannot see them as much. So this is a part that uh, it's a bit of pain. But man, I live in a country where everything is like five times less expensive than Switzerland. So man, do the, do the math, man. It's better, better world living. <laughs> no, but man, come on, your question, man. What the fuck do you expect? <laughs> Um, you think uh, 20 is, uh, I mean, I, I think, yes, it's enough to start. Uh, okay. So honestly, um, uh, it's enough to start, but it depends on what you want to trade. There is, I'm pretty sure that, uh, there is a bunch of, um, uh, uh, a product that you can do one truck. One truck is 5,000, 10,000 euro. So yeah, it's, it's definitely enough to start. Do you miss Otsawa? No, I don't. Uh, you know. But uh, you know, I used to come, I used to go a lot to uh, to Chamonix to ski. Um, and you know, not not Chamonix, uh, Chamonix. I know how to pronounce it correctly. Oh, and, uh, so uh, guys, I see that. Let me know if there is any other questions. Um, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and in 10 minutes, I think I will uh, just close it. I think I've exhausted you. So. Um, just so that in my how I uh, you know anyone trading cement in Africa? No, I don't. But uh, actually, I don't know. it's not true. I know one guy that trade cement in Africa. Is, uh, it's one of my former clients. Um, and I think he buys cement in Senegal and resell it to, to Mali. It's small margin, but it works well for him. But I knew one company. I mean, I had one friend that worked for uh, a company that uh, was trading cement to Africa, and their business model was extremely interesting. But the company went under. <laughs> but uh, they basically, I think, cement the cheapest that you can get is in uh, Vietnam, and it's like uh, like forty bucks or something like this. So basically, the cost of the freight is extremely important. And what they were able to do. If they could take like the, the biggest ship, like I don't know, fifty thousand metric ton, fill it with uh, cement, and then they would just go around uh, um, in in Africa, and then deliver five thousand metric ton there, ten thousand metric ton there, five thousand metric ton there, and so on from this same same ship. They would run this trade like two times a year, and would make like pff, a million profit uh, with each of those trades. And if something goes wrong, because obviously it's Africa. 
and sometimes the guy is not uh, buying whatever. The traders, one of the traders, just would go there in the in the country, unload the the shit for himself, and then sell it on the market or doing whatever. So man, but but this company went bankrupt because they bought like a mine in Colombia, a coal mine or something like this, and price of coal went down, and the private equity firm that they they took the money from just liquidated them. Their first investment? What do you mean for, for my first commodity trading firm? Uh, 20,000 20, uh, Swiss franc. So this is roughly 20,000 uh, euro. Toronto, Canada, don't have... No, but actually they do. Maybe not Toronto, actually. Yeah. That's right. But Canada, there's a bunch. A lot of grains, lumber, coal. Um, there's a lot of jobs in Canada, but maybe not Toronto, you're right. Do the trade association real life right, finance? Which, do the trade association really finance the trade easily? What is a trade association, dude? I'm not sure I follow you. Man, it was it was a uh, cheating you. <laughs> then got started by uh, being a trader. Yeah. Man, I've seen so much like a cement uh, factory or something in in Africa, like small one, but they are just taking rust or whatever. Uh, they they just worked like two, three year, five year top, and then I don't know why they just stop it. I, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with cement. How did you finance your first trade ever with my money? You know, but one trade is not. What container is not a lot of money, man? I mean, of course, if you have none, it's a lot. But uh, in the grand scheme of uh, money land, it's not that much. Uh, then, yeah, trade, uh, my money, then family office, then uh, community trade finance form, then banks. That's it. Sometimes the supplier money, you know? Uh, any type of money is good money. <laughs> Okay, guys. So um, thanks a lot for all of you. Uh, on, I mean, this is cool that you, you came on Sunday. Uh, at the top, we are like 32, something like this. So I mean, this is cool. Um, anyway, if you have like any question about the Shipping and Community Academy, uh, send me an email. If you want to get my email, it's easy. Just uh, download the brochure on our, the Shipping and Community Academy website, uh, and you will get my email. Um, and uh, yes, as I said, right now we are launching the third version of the Shipping Community Academy course. So there is like a coupon code, a coupon discount code, but it's uh, going to last only for two more days until the end of the month. Then the price is going to be bumped again. We are in time of inflation, guys. So uh, yeah, we increase the price. Is it possible to get a trading job uh, two years after graduation from UA? I missed the deadline for the new. Um, Ah, okay. You want to get uh, a new grad program two years? Yeah, it's still possible. It's still possible. All right. Wish you all well. Ciao, ciao.